Yeah, this this basically there you can use those, but you have to program them in. I mean, there's there's controls that allow you to do that, but the standard UI is that you just you 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 pan. It just assumes that you're moving either one way or the other to the right or to the left. This kind of goes through the the actual basic components of the phone. So you've got this. Um, Essentially, you've got a direct 3D service. You have a 3D-enabled uh, service. You have your standard uh, navigation experience up front. You have your application layer, which you can build on top of that. You've got keyboard access, app bar with standard controls. Um, there's a library of standard controls that you've got. Um, you've got, essentially, the switchable uh, thread. So, for example, you're playing a game. Somebody calls. You switch to the call. You can switch back and continue playing your game, that type of scenario. And then your standard uh, um, kind of system elements. So this is kind of the, I guess, the layered architecture, the UI, the phone. The SIP. It's going to support that in the sense that you can develop applications that leverage SIP. So any more detail there, I'd have to probably get you there to the right person because I don't know that much about it. These are some of the standard gestures that will actually be available with the phone. Uh, tap, double tap, touch and hold. Pretty consistent with what you're, you've experienced in other devices. Uh, one of the key things is they're trying to make the gestures very consistent across the devices as opposed to being programmed in by a lot of developers now on the current platform. So here's a little bit about the hardware. Um, you basically 800 by 480, uh, you've got What's going to come out later is this 480 by 320. If you kind of think of it in terms of, of a more like an iPhone uh, type uh, layout versus uh, the Kin, which, which came out recently, which is a slightly smaller device. So there's going to be a very low end device. And one of the reasons for that is we really have a target of being able to hit a large uh, kind of variety of target, you know, purchase prices for the devices. So we just don't have one uh, big fat device. We've got a variety of different devices that can fit into uh, different uh, pricing models. Still with the same basic hardware requirements, they're just going to be slightly smaller form factors and, um, and smaller packages. This goes into a little bit more details about the, uh, the UI. Capacitive touch, sensors, GPS integration, accelerometers, so your tilt and move. Uh, in fact, that, that's what I was trying to get sensor boards for, is because we have actually external, I was trying to get some for this event, and it didn't work out to the hardware vendor, couldn't get them to me. Um, light proximity, so the sensor input actually feeds directly into your phone, proximity to other phones, for example, so that you know if you're playing a game, there's four people around, the phones will know where the location of the other game that's getting close to it is. Uh, camera, five megapixels or more. Uh, multimedia, there's, I touch a little bit on 3D acceleration, also touch a little bit at, and later in the presentation on the uh, audio uh, elements, the audio development. Lots of memory, lots of uh, storage on the devices. Uh, GPU is a DirectX 9 accelerated, so it's, a, it's a basically a, you know full pipeline GPU that's on the device, that's on the phone. And it's optimized for uh, power consumption, so it's also a very uh, uh, power, uh, power balanced device. And then this is the standard CPU, this ARM V7 uh, uh, CPU is the uh, standard CPU for the device. I'm going to kind of build this up. I included this, um, I'm not going to walk through all the boxes because I don't want to, I want to like, get you back to your game development. But I included this in the presentation, so you can kind of, if you want to, kind of walk through it a little bit. Probably the key thing I want to highlight is that you've got Silverlight, XNA, and HTML JavaScript. They're looking at uh, HTML5 down the road as well. So HTML5 uh, is is coming as well, uh, built on top of the standard uh, CLR, the the standard uh, .NET platform. And you've got your standard app model. You've got uh, you know the the UI model, which I kind of discussed. This 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 kind of clean framework and cloud integration is going to be native in much of the platform. So it's going to be native in the .NET platform, which means you can tap into your own cloud. You can tap into uh, like uh, Bing Maps. You can tap into Xbox Live. In fact, Xbox Live is going to ship natively on the device. So if I'm actually playing, if I'm if I have an Xbox Live handle, 
I can go in there and actually sh can share my character. I may have built a character in Xbox. I can share that character onto my phone and actually perhaps even use characters in a, in a phone game that's similar to the characters I'm using in Xbox. I also keep all my points and all that infrastructure. So the whole transaction infrastructure behind Xbox Live is there as well. Um, you've got uh, Live ID connectivity, and I'll talk a little bit about the cloud, Azure, and things like that down the road as well. This, uh, this kind of gets into the, the cloud element. So one of the key things that they focused a lot on was you know, how do we actually bring the cloud into the phone? And part of that is actually creating a development environment that allows you to easily bring the cloud into the, the, the phone. Now, you may not be surprised, but this is a, you know, pretty much a Visual Studio, a strong .NET platform environment. Now, we are opening up to uh, companies, and I've had this discussion, we need to dig into it with Wild Pockets, but able to actually bring, you know, for example, bring a Wild Pockets game into the store and actually publish it on the phone and let people play on the phone. So we do have third-party elements that, that actually have to tie into the stack. But um, that's all. That's all process that's in work. If I just want to pull out the tools and build a game natively out of the box, then I use your your typical uh, Visual Studio tools uh, expression, for example, for doing a lot of the, uh, the the media design and the the uh, the animation design, and then tie it together with .NET between the, the client and the and the back end. Included in that, though, is is elements of of you know they're 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 working out the uh, connectivity, for example, you know, the phone between the phone and the cloud. So you're going through, you know, a wireless carrier, a transaction pipe, there's essentially, you know, some asynchronous kind of optimization. It's not because you can't maintain a synchronous connection on a wireless device. A lot of times you drop it, it comes back, and it really kind of can screw applications up. And a lot of that's being baked into the platform. This is uh, kind of an extended view. Uh, the little boxes and kind of layout of what the platform looks like. And I'm, I'm kind of spinning through this. There's another, another video I'd like to do, which is uh, talks about the hardware acceleration, and you can kind of see what the hardware acceleration looks like. And I think in particular, since you guys are doing these types of games, I'm going to click through here. This is, this is actually talking about the cloud. So you can use yours, you know, whether running on whatever, because it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, standard, you know, web connectivity from an integration perspective. You can use, um, you can use, a, you know, classic uh, uh, Windows Communication Foundation. You can use SOAP, REST, LINK, or you can use our platforms, uh, including Azure. So this is this is one element right now that's 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 uh, that's a little bit in flux. I mean, you, you you're probably familiar uh, from a gaming development perspective in XNA. There's a little bit of a balance between XNA and Silverlight right now. Essentially, the bulk of the focus of the 3D acceleration and the hardcore kind of 3D animated games is still focused around XNA. So the tendency would be towards XNA in that arena. But there's a lot of Silverlight game development going on and a lot of Silverlight app development. For example, the graphically comic book uh, demo that I did was a Silverlight game top to bottom. There's no XNA in there. And it was leveraging a lot of the hardware acceleration and things natively on the phone that was still supported with Silverlight. So it's, I would say probably Silverlight is, is kind of like 2.5D. So it's like 2D with, on the phone, it's 2D with kind of the animations and cool things like that. Where it's still, um, if, you're, if you're building a hardcore uh, XNA, uh, a hardcore 3D game, you're probably going to use XNA. And I'll, I'll, I'll show the little video about some different scenarios and what's native in there for the uh, phone that's, uh, that's largely leveraging XNA. Uh, the video is the, the actually XNA architect that is doing that. This talks about some of the standard uh, uh, capabilities of the phone. And we talked about touch, hardware buttons, the, the, there's kind of a center main button uh, that, that triggers a lot of the touch interaction. Uh, the uh, media capabilities, uh, data integration, link actually supported on the device, so you can actually uh, uh, navigate between the device, I mean the, the, the uh, content on the device. It's super, super set of Silverlight 3, now it's actually 4 because 4 is released. So there's Silverlight 4 uh, is going to be on the phone as well. And you've got um, the phone elements, sensors, uh, the GPS type stuff, and the cloud. <coughs> 